Hi there, I'm Sky, and welcome back to my channel. And on today's episode of Bringing a Film Format Back from the Dead, we have a Panoram Kodak, number four, model D. This particular camera came to me from another photographer on Instagram named Bruce McCamish. Bruce asked me to make film specifically for this camera so he could use it as it would have been used back a hundred years ago. I eventually had to make my own spools for this, as well as backing paper and frame numbers that I had to print, or in my case, stamp out. So I 3D designed and 3D printed 103 type film spools, as well as uh, a mechanism for cutting the paper. The main focus about this camera is its lens. It comes with a Gertz de Gore 124mm f6.8. Most of the time, these cameras typically come with a single element meniscus set to about f13. This particular model allows you to unscrew the front so you can pull out the waterhouse stops and change the aperture. Unfortunately, this camera is missing some components, including the other waterhouse stops and it only has a roughly f22 ish waterhouse stop included the number four was manufactured between 1900 and 1924 the model d in particular was manufactured between 1907 till 1924 it was capable of taking four images on Kodak 103 film. Each shot was roughly 142 degrees, and it had a frame size of 3.5 inches tall by 12 inches long. Unfortunately, with what I had to make, the spools I made for Bruce, it only contains enough film for three. When I attempted to make the spools long enough to do four shots, I had issues with the take-up spool being able to fully seat. The other major issue with this particular camera is, for whatever reason, a previous owner decided to remove the rollers. Because of that, I had to make my own. So let's first cut this camera open. Alright, that was mean. I did need this rotary tool to cut up some stainless steel capillary tubes I found on eBay. After cutting it down to the right length, I was able to reinstall it and like it never lost it. When it comes to cutting the backing paper, I had a number of attempts and failures that I'm not going to get into. So I'm just going to cut to the completed actual jig or mechanism that I use to cut the film. It mainly relies on a piece of wood with three razor blades in order to cut two strips of equal width. Once completed, I lift it up, remove the, remove the mandrel, and install fresh paper. I have two of these, so I load up two at a time and run through both before removing all four rolls off and moving on. Bruce wanted 12 completed rolls, uh, so you know I had to do this six times, plus some additional ones that Euphis requested, and of course my testing spools. In total, I cut 20 full spool rolls worth of backing paper. This is me test fitting the spool, making sure that this is the correct size before moving on and cutting the rest of them. Anyways, short trip down to a local Walmart and time to test the camera. Okay. So I'm here at a random Walmart parking lot. Uh, this is the newest prototype for the spool. It's gonna be able to hold three images instead of four. It's slightly wider. Nothing really increases. The film is still the same size, so. I wanted this to be a section of the video for Bruce so he can have something to refer back to whenever he wants to learn how to use his camera, so. There are two hidden buttons on the back here. Push them in, that'll open up the back of the camera. You'll need a take-up spool, which I'll already have installed. Make sure you rotate that into a position with the largest slot facing outwards, that way you can load it up. Come over to the other side, and of course, this is where you install the new film. Let me get this off and we'll get started. Oh. Pull the tab on the top. 
And on the bottom, make sure they're open all the way. Keep the tongue out and lower it into position. Move it around until you get it lined up. Might be easier if it's already on a tripod, but once you get one side in, it makes it kind of easy to get the other side to go in. There we are. Pull it through like so. We can close this side. Come over to the other. Feed it in. I don't need that open. And stick it in to the slot. As far as you'll get it to go in. Hold one finger while trying to advance the film. Once it gets started like so, Keep a close eye on the sides and make sure that it's going on as even as possible. Once it tracks, it usually stays in that position. So just move it back and forth until it's even on both sides going on and stop. Come back and open the back of the camera up to make sure your position. It'll be a nicer arrow, but look for the arrow. The arrow needs to line up with the center of the camera. So advance and then close your camera. The window, you're gonna advance until you count, I think it's six arrows. If not, I'll put it on screen, but you're looking for the number one. That'll be your first uh, photo position. So I'm just gonna go ahead and advance and then we'll move to outside. I'm not gonna show myself taking the photo because I just feel weird already photographing a Walmart parking lot. So. Uh, I'm just going to do this really quick, but I thought this section would be good for how to load the camera. Uh, as far as controls, this is your lowest setting on each side. Push down and move. That's your highest setting, your fastest. About 1 100th and about 1 50th. I leave it in a neutral position when I'm not using the spring, so you don't wear the spring out over time of it just sitting on a shelf and not being used. Your viewfinder is not very good other than to center up a specific object. If there's something in the distance you want to focus on to be the center of the image, that's what that's good for. Past that, I never use those. Shutter button, level, handle, which is as old as it is. I wouldn't recommend holding it. Hold it with two hands. You'll be uh, happier that way. I've seen people drop their cameras because these snap. Just leave it alone. Uh, anyways, yeah, see you back at the studio. Okay, so it uh, turns out that one of my previous tasks to do 101 and 122 film will actually work with uh, this size of film. This is about two or sorry, three and three quarters. Yeah, so this is about three and three quarter inch wide film. So it's slightly wider than what I use in the All Vista 3B. But last year, I designed and 3D printed this spiral to be able to fit inside three real Patterson tanks. I think it's a three real, yeah, three real Patterson tanks. So, interestingly enough, you can use this to develop it uh, with a daylight tank. So, a couple of things that you have to do to modify this just for it to work properly. While you're in the dark room, or dark space or whatever you're doing all of this in the dark is the point you'll want to have a pair of scissors nearby and you'll want to make a slight angle on the ends uh, and you'll preset the width on this by by the space between here and here it needs to be at least three and a half inches or sorry, three and three quarters inches. That way you can load it onto here and develop it. And of course, this is all done in, in the dark room and lights out. You're not doing this with the lights on. You'll start off by feeding the end into the, into the reel. So you get about that far. Then you'll grab with one set of fingers here and rotate this forward. Grab with this set of fingers, release, twist. Grab, 
forward, release, twist. You can keep doing this motion until all of the film, sorry about that, is on the reel. Once it's all the way on like that, so you're past about an inch past the opening there, you can then load it into your tank and do all of your development. One last thing I forgot to mention before we move on. This is pre-spaced for three and a half inch film, not three and three quarter. In order to get that extra quarter of an inch space, you actually have to pull up on the main piece uh, while it's still on this mandrel. So when it sits naturally, it sits compressed down like so. Because it's press fit, this will hold really well and you'll have to push on this to pull it back out, but only pull it out by about a quarter of an inch. So do this in the daylight before you go in the dark and you won't be fighting this. So see, that's about three, that's a little bit bigger than three quarters, so you'll have to adjust it. Make sure you get a good uh, set of calipers or something. That way you can get in between here and measure at least uh, three, uh, three and a, three and a, th sorry, three and three quarters inches. I'll push it in just a little bit, doing this all one-handed. And see now, now that matches up perfectly and should go on. You might want to give it a little bit more space, a little bit more of a gap, but that's how you're able to reuse the 101, 122 uh, reel. All right, onto the development. Um, ooh, one, 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 one more thing to add. So I went to Walmart parking lot to take the photos and it turns out that the issues that I was having before are still there, but not as bad. I heard after I rolled up the film and onto the take-up drum or take-up spool completely, I heard it unwind inside the camera. So that means that it, it, it unbunched itself. A dark bag or a dark uh, a, a film changing tent is going to be necessary to use this setup because I can't get the film to stop from unwinding. It just keeps wanting to do it. So there's nothing I can do to change that. It's going to need to be opened up in a dark space to be able to unload the camera. Okay. Uh, we're going to do rodent all today. I have a fresh bottle here. I'm worried about using what's in here. There's a bunch of crystals gathering in the bottom, so I'm not really sure if the uh concentration see all that that's all like crystal build up i worry that the concentration is going to be weird so we're going to use a fresh ball my house is set up on uh, rodi so i have fresh it practically distilled it's just rodi water so uh whenever i do agfa aviafo development i typically do a one minute pre-rinse uh, and since this is going to be at such a high concentration at a one plus 25 i'm probably going to go one minute eight minutes one minute and then three minutes on my fix my fix is tf5 already pre-made i just reuse this until it stops working i don't really ever see a need for getting rid of my fix uh, this is already fixed probably about two or three dozen prints as well as um probably 10 or 15 10 inch wide negatives so still good anyways i'm gonna get this mixed up and we'll start the development get my one plus 25 concentration i'm doing a thousand milliliters of fluid so uh 40 of my concentrate Okay, like I said before, uh, one minute pre-rinse. This will get rid of the anti-halation layer that's built into Agfa. What you'll see when I pour this out is gonna be a bluish black colored uh, uh, rinse. That's all of the dye that's on the back or all of the anti-halation layer that's on the back. I'm gonna go through the development and we'll be back soon.
So I definitely overdeveloped it a bit. Whew, wow, that is right on the edge. Right, that last frame is right on the edge. I guess that would have been the and yeah, I'll have to readjust my placement of the film, but uh, there's detail here. It definitely has a glow to it on, a, on all the highlights. All right, I'm gonna let this hang up and dry and uh, then we'll get it scanned. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow, there's a lot. A lot of detail in these shots. I'm surprised. You know, for what he's probably going to use it for, I think Rodinol might not be so bad because even if it looks like it's slightly overexposed, when he goes to scan it and digitize it, he gets extra shadow detail. So, hang this up, let it dry, and we'll be back with the scans. And that's it. These three images are the only test shots I was able to complete. I had a lot of time with this camera, but I had got so many mistakes and messed up so many different times and so many different redesigns that uh, I was only able to use it just the one time before I packed it up and sent it off to Bruce. So hopefully Bruce will be the one to respond and let me know if I did a good job. And I'd like to thank Bruce for letting me work on this camera and, uh, you know, helping to support the channel in this way. Without his contribution, I doubt I would have ever tackled this job as it was a very difficult job. So thank you, Bruce. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the camera. And if you're new to this channel, thank you uh, for watching this far. I doubt many of you would. But uh, if you've lasted this long, please hit that like, share, and if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Bye.